My name is Larry Bird, and I'm a curator in the Division of Politics and Reform at the National Museum of American History. And right now we're in our reference area collection. And these are all of the things that are not on exhibit at any given time in the campaign collection. And it's a quite extensive collection, about 100,000 objects. We have a wonderful collection of hats, uh, badges, banners, buttons, ribbons, uh, all kinds of clothing, accessories, uh, domestic uh, items such as potholders, anything that can, you can have a candidate's likeness or name put on. And it, uh, it, it says a lot, I, I think, about how people participate in politics and lend a sense of activism and engagement to the campaign. Many of the people who were running the, the Republican campaign in the in 1950s, 52 and 56, were ardent uh, enthusiasts for Eisenhower. Because they came from the world of advertising, they spent their days and nights thinking of new places to plaster that slogan. And you see it on buttons, which are the most ubiquitous, even still today, campaign merchandise ever produced. And you also see it on stockings, you see it on articles of apparel, such as these gloves that were made, women's kid gloves. And neckties, neckwear, is really interesting and important. Uh, this is a this set of Truman uh, portrait ties. One of my favorite photographs from this period uh, is of a department store in Tennessee. The Dewey ties are sold out, and the Truman ties are marked down. I mean, even if you were judging sales of you know, neckwear, it looked like it would be a landslide for, for Dewey. This is a, a Goldwater girl uh, outfit. There's a, a doll who is modeling the outfit. This was for Goldwater's 1964 presidential run. It, it sort of follows in a, in a tradition of coming up with a costume with a kind of a candidate identity for women. Before Goldwater girls, there were of course Nixon girls, and then of course were Ike girls. Yeah. Okay, these are two dolls made, you know, 1964 campaign. Barry Goldwater, the Republican, and Lyndon Johnson and they're both wearing hats. We have a Roosevelt teddy bear, but very few people actually have a Roosevelt doll. This is a teddy doll, and with his fabulous grin. This is a, a gentleman's top hat. Uh, on the inside, is very cleverly merchandising Benjamin Harrison, so we know this is around the 1888 campaign. T-shirts were not something that adults wore with messages on them. Uh, initially, they were for children. And this is an example of one of the earliest uh, political campaign T-shirts, and it's a do it with Dewey. Yeah. This is what you call a classic summer straw hat. And this is made for you know, Mr. American, the official Eisenhower delegate. From that idea of a summer straw hat, you get, in 1960, a Kennedy hat with a portrait of the president on the on the top of the hat. So very quickly you take you know a familiar form and you, you turn it into plastic and then you can mass produce it more easily and more expeditiously. I believe it was 1996 in Manchester, New Hampshire. We were going through a, a Pat Buchanan headquarters. There was a woman who was wearing a, a custom-made tricorner hat. And another of Buchanan's themes was of peasants and pitchforks. And somehow this was translated from peasants and with pitchforks to hard hats. And it's a way of uh, expressing your, your loyalty and the obligation you feel to the candidate. And it's a, it's a way of discreetly expressing yourself.